This is going to be Revelation chapter 18, and we're going to see the destruction of Babylon. And we can also get some spiritual application for ourselves, some practical stuff. Let's look at why Babylon is so wicked and why God will let them be destroyed. Number one, because they deal with devils. Uh, Revelation 18.1 says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Imagine being on earth at this time and feeling the fright as an angel comes down from the third heaven and lightens up the earth. The news will probably tell you it is visitors from outer space. And the time of Jacob's trouble is a dark time. So an angel coming down would really lighten the place up. Revelation 18.2, it says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Notice that Babylon is a place of devils. Satan and his minions can take up residence in a certain place, and you will notice in life that certain places can be more evil than others. Walking into the average mall in a big city sometimes reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah. It just That just comes to my mind when I walk through a mall sometimes because you will see Sodomite men putting makeup on women. It's just backwards. It's strange to see a man who acts like a woman putting makeup on a woman. And you will see giant pictures of half-naked women outside of the clothing stores. Uh, you will see young men and women dressed up like whores. And all of these are signs that Satan has took up residence there. Now, does this mean we shouldn't go out into a store? Uh, no, we have to go and live life. We can't just stay at home. But we shouldn't partake of everyone's evil deeds but all of these are signs that Satan has took up residence in a certain place. And in the Bible, there is the devil, which is Satan. And there are many devils. And there are many devils working. Uh, Satan is the prince of the devils. The word demon isn't actually in the Bible. But when someone says demon, they're referring to devils. So Babylon deals with devils. Elijah said to Ahab on the, in the Old Testament... Thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord, and you can sell out the devils just by choosing this wicked world over the Lord Jesus Christ. Just by staying in rejection of Jesus Christ, you are choosing the devil. And that is what Babylon does. They will choose riches and worldly pleasures over the God of the Bible. And if you do this, then you can expect to be influenced by devils and any foul or unclean spirit. Notice that Babylon is also the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So unclean birds are likened to devils in the Bible. And ever notice how birds will circle, circle around dead things. And this pictures the devil who circles around sinners who are dead in trespasses and sins. And if you've ever heard of the game Angry Birds, right here is where that comes from. These are Babylon is the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. But uh, if you deal with devils, you are headed for a fall. And that's what Babylon does. And number two, they not only deal with devils, they drag others down. Revelation 18.3 says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Babylon influences the world to commit spiritual fornication through the worship of idols. Babylon keeps people in covetousness through her delicacies. The world is advertised in a way to make you want more and more and to keep your mind away from God and the things of the Bible. Uh, notice the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The merchants of the earth are deceived by Babylon, and they in turn deceive others. And that is why the Bible talks about evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And that is why it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. The world is dragging the whole world down with it. Rich men are deceiving the people who buy their products, 
while those rich men who are deceiving you are deceived by spiritual wickedness in high places. And most of the entertainment being bought today is sinful and ruining the morals of the people. That is what it is designed to do. There is a plan behind all of the sodomites and TV shows and all of the acceptance of transgender and all this other wickedness. They're training you to accept this stuff and they're wanting to demoralize you. And this is one of the steps in bringing in a new world order. Demoralizing the people will help bring in a new world order. We can also drag others down as individuals ourselves. Paul says, no man liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself. Everything you do affects others who you see in this life who, and who see you. Uh, some look up to you and some are watching you just to see if you're going to do something wicked. And this way they can use your sin to blackmail you or talk about how much of a hypocrite are you are. And they'll use it to blaspheme God and stay in rejection of Jesus Christ. They'll say, well, he claims to be a Christian. He's sinning just like me so I can stay in my sin, not get saved, and I'll still be fine. But we have seen where Babylon deals with devils, they drag others down, and number three, they delight in deviance. Revelation 18.4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Sometimes there are gods that, false, false gods that people are worshiping, over the true God. You probably have a false God in your life and you really don't, you don't even know it. And there are people who are saved that are in religious systems and they're worshiping a false God, don't realize it, and they need to come out of that religious system. If you're in a false religion, and maybe you're even a closet Christian, you're not telling the people in your religion because you don't want to be rejected by your family but you need to come out of that religious system that's worshiping false gods just like lot left sodom as you read in the book of genesis you need to come out of whatever false system you're in sometimes gods people get out in the world and they live like the devil in our case if we get out in sin and in the world we need to confess our sin because he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, Revelation 18.5 says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. A Babylon will delight and brag in her sin. She delights in her own deviance uh, with gay pride parades. And even today there's gay pride parades and award shows to give people awards for being wicked. There's open blasphemy in the streets. There's street preachers who get spit on just for giving the gospel. All these things show that these people are unashamed of being devilish. They're coming out of the closet and saying, I'm not ashamed, I'm not embarrassed for who I am. And God will remember these iniquities. Thank God if you have salvation because he won't remember your iniquities. And the difference between a saved person and a lost person is you're ashamed of your sin. The Bible says, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? And when somebody gets saved, they don't, they're not just sorry for what they've done, they're sorry for who they are. When I got saved, I was sorry for who I was. I was a dirty sinner and I turned from my own self-righteousness and I turn to the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And when it comes to eternity, I'm now as righteous as Jesus Christ in the eyes of God. I'm sitting in heavenly places in eternity with Christ Jesus. My body is here on the earth because your body doesn't get born again. But when it comes to being in Christ and in the eternal sense, I'm in, I'm in heaven, sitting in heavenly places. But Babylon's sins have reached unto heaven, as the verse said, like the Tower of Babel. 
They wanted to build a building whose top reaches unto heaven. That was also sin, and Babylon has piled up sins that go beyond the height of that tower. Revelation 18.6 says, Reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. So God has a cup. And we have talked about this before. Back in Genesis it says, The iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Each time a nation or people sins, their cup gets more full of the wrath of God. And when it reaches the top, God will then pour it out and make them drink it. Revelation 14.10 talks about some who will drink of the wine of the wrath of God. And at these VMAs, the Video Music Awards, and the Grammys, and Oscars, and BET Awards, and other awards shows, they will reward people for their wickedness. And God will reward Babylon for her wickedness, but it won't be with a little golden trophy. It will be with feeling the wrath of God. She is so proud of her sin and delights in her deviance, but she won't be proud when she is plunging off into hell. Uh, Babylon is getting what is coming to her. For all the bad things she will do to God's people in the time of Jacob's trouble and has done in the past, God says... Or Paul, God says through Paul, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord, in the book of Romans. And then Revelation 18, 7 says, How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Notice how Babylon has built herself up. She is living deliciously every day clothed in purple and scarlet and faring sumptuously every day, just like the rich man in Luke 16. She glorified herself and says in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. She says in her heart, I am a queen. And the Bible talks about the queen of heaven. People talk about Mary being the queen of heaven. And in Isaiah fourteen thirteen, Satan says in his heart, he will be like the Most High. And Babylon, like the devil, has a heart problem. She says in her heart, I am a queen. I sit a queen and am no widow and will see no sorrow. Ecclesiastes 8.11 says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Babylon will have a good run without facing judgment, and then out of nowhere she will feel the wrath of Almighty God. And remember that before you stub up on God and say in your heart that you are going to be something great without God's help and then live this life doing what you want as your own final authority. Notice that Revelation 18.7 says, So much torment and sorrow give her. And that is the opposite of heaven. She is getting hell on earth and then the literal hell after the hell on earth. So she deals with devils drags others down, delights in her deviance, and she also drinks the blood of the saints. In Revelation 18.24, it says, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Uh, the Catholic Church murdered a mass amount of Christians, and she will continue this in the time of Jacob's trouble where she will kill God's people in a worship service and shed the blood of the saints. The <clears throat> the cannibal stuff is trying to become the new thing. In one of Katy Perry's latest music videos, she eats a group of men at the end of the, the video. And there is some kind of art gathering or party where celebrities came together and watched a group of artists cut open food that looked like a human body. And they were pretending to eat human body parts, but were heading so in such a wicked time that this is going to seem normal they're trying to make things normal that aren't normal uh, the world without god is outright heathen and people with the bible without the bible they will go back to the jungle they'll act like animals with no morals no sense of right or wrong they may dress it up and make it seem pretty but it's still evil and they're still heathen. 
uh, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, and the Antichrist and his workers of iniquity will kill and eat God's people in a religious worship service. And you can already see it heading in that direction. Uh, the Catholic Mass already prepares people for this because they teach the bread is literally the flesh of Jesus and that the wine is the literal blood of Jesus. But now let's look at her torment and sorrow that she will face. In Revelation 18, 8 and 9, we read, Therefore shall her, shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. So she is going to experience death, mourning, and famine. Death is a dreadful thing for them because this life is, is all they live for. She is going to face mourning. She had been living it up and living deliciously, but she will find out there is a consequence for sin. Hebrews 11.25 says the pleasures of sin only last for a season. She had fun while it lasted, but now there is hell to pay. There's a payday someday for every person. If you're saved, then Jesus Christ paid for your sins. And when it comes to eternity, you're saved and sealed and you have eternal life. But you'll pay for your sins that you commit in the flesh on this earth. You'll get chastised. You can lose your health, your wealth. You can lose your testimony. With others, people will say, well, he's not a Christian. Look at what he's doing. There's always a consequence to sin for every person. And if you're saved, you're not going to pay for your sins in hell. You're going to pay for them in the earth. You'll lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. You can live it up and party, live deliciously, and be godless. But remember what Ecclesiastes 11.9 says. It says, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. She is also going to experience famine. Imagine going from a full belly every day and being overweight to waking up with no food and starving. They will end up eating each other. The verse says she will be utterly burned with fire, and nothing hurts worse than getting burned, and Babylon is going to burn, just like Sodom got burned, just like Satan's army gets burned at the end of the millennium. Revelation 18.9, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Their hope was in material is going to be in material things, and their affections are not going to be on things in heaven. They're going to be on things on the earth beneath. Their hope is in the Pope. Their hope is in their bank account. Their hope is in the technology that they're going to try to use to live forever, so they can be as gods, like Adam and Eve, or as Eve desired when she was tempted by Satan. Revelation 18.10 says, Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is that judgment come. Notice they have too much faith in man-made things. They are calling Babylon mighty and great. And in Psalms 135.10, the Lord is said to have smote great nations and slew mighty kings. Jeremiah 32.18 calls him the great, the mighty God. God is great and mighty. Babylon is not. Revelation 18.11 And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. And it doesn't take long for God to knock off anybody that he wants to knock off. Uh, Revelation 18.12 and 13 says, The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thyine wood and all manners of Vessel, vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. All this stuff that we put before God that is made out of wood and stone and silver and gold are nothing but idols. And Deuteronomy twenty nine seventeen says... 
and ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. And since Babylon will be demolished, they won't be able to buy their idols anymore. Notice that some of her merchandise is slaves. Slavery is still active now and will still be active in that horrible time period. And this includes sex trafficking rings and pedophile rings that have people as sex slaves. Revelation 18.14 says, And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. Earthly things are temporary. Heavenly things are eternal. Babylon and her victims don't understand eternal things. Uh, Revelation 18.15, The merchants of these things, for which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for their fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Notice that they were made rich by her. They were the craftsmen who made the idols of silver and gold to be sold in Babylon. If you look at Acts 19, 24 and 25, it says, For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain into the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Idols are the work of men's hands, the Bible says. Revelation 18.16 says, And saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Notice her appearance is attractive to the eye. The woman in Babylon are probably in the attire of an harlot. And one of the things that leads to the fall of a nation is wicked women in their wardrobe. Showing off nakedness leads to sexual immorality and perversion. Babylon is clothed in fine linen, purple, and scarlet. This is royal apparel, like the rich man wears in Luke chapter 16, who goes to hell. And the book of James, which is an end times book that is directed primarily as doctrine for Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble, it talks about people wearing the gay clothing who look down on those in vile raiment. And the people in Babylon would be the ones in the gay clothing. And God's people who don't take the mark of the beast will be the ones in vile raiment. Gay clothing could also be a prophecy of actual sodomite fashion. God knew that people would turn the word gay into a slang term for the sodomites. And you already see the sodomite fashion today. But Revelation eighteen seventeen and 18 says, For in one hour so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors... And as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they sm saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? So here God sends smoke signals to these heathen, and these smoke signals tell them about judgment. Yet they still don't repent. It says, So great riches is come to naught, and their riches are going to just be nothing. It will be worthless, and they couldn't buy their way out of the judgment of God. Proverbs 11, 4 says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Revelation eighteen nineteen says, And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Over and over in the book of Revelation, God shows you a real disaster movie that will be better than virtual reality. And you will get to live out a disaster, a real disaster movie, if you don't get saved. You can have all the material items in the world stocked up in warehouses and locked away in a safe. And then out of nowhere, destruction will come and it's gone. Because things of this world do not last. Luke 12 19 through 21 says, And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall these, those things be which thou hast provided? 
So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Notice this great city can be seen from the sea. And so can Vatican City. It can be seen from the Mediterranean. Revelation 18.20 says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Notice that the right reaction to Babylon's destruction is rejoicing. And I hope you're not so stuck in the world that you would bewail and lament and mourn over a casino and strip clubs and bars and simple places being destroyed. Sure, we don't want to rejoice over lost people dying in those places, but we shouldn't weep over a sinful place like a strip club and a casino because those things are causing people to be wicked. God will avenge all the blood that has been shed. And Revelation 18.21 says, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city of Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. So God's going to avenge all the blood that's been shed. Babylon is not getting away with anything. Babylon is going to be so far gone that they could get they couldn't get any technology together that would be able to find her in the sea. She is going to be thrown down by a great millstone. And atheists are always talking about can God create a rock so hef so heavy that he can't lift it? Well, here is a real heavy rock for you if you're that concerned about a rock. He will th throw the city down with violence. As the verse says, and he beats them at their own game. They loved violence. They have hands that shed innocent blood. So there is their blood shed. Revelation 18.22 And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. The craftsmen made the idols. And Babylon loves idols. Maybe you didn't know this, but the Catholic Church gets rid of the second commandment. What's the second commandment? In Exodus 24 and 5, it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. They get rid of this commandment and are eat up with graven images. They love statues and pictures. Revelation 18.22 And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. All that sinful music will come to a stop. No more concerts in Babylon that will honor Satan and sin. No more concerts with the all-seeing eye patched all over it. No more devil horns being thrown up. Revelation 18.23 And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Notice the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. The Catholic Church loves to light candles, and people involved in sorceries Sorcery loved to light candles, and that is what they are involved in that helped them deceive the nations, and witchcraft has become popular even now in this country, and it will gain popularity as time goes on. Look up Salem, Massachusetts, and notice how wicked that it is concerning witchcraft. There are some very wicked places that maybe you don't know about, and we, we walk around and we think everything's okay. We go to church on Sunday. Then we go eat. And then we come home. We spend time with our family. It's a sunny day. We got a nice house. We got nice cars. We got nice phones. We don't realize the wickedness <clears throat> that's, going on <clears throat> that's going on in the world. And we need to look into what's going on. We shouldn't just take pleasure and knowing the wicked things that's going on. A lot of times when you talk about the evil things that's going on in the world, people think you're doing that for pleasure. No, you're trying to give people a wake-up call of what's going on. Everything's not okay. Uh, the movies and the music give you the idea that everything's okay. 
but everything's not okay. The world's going to hell, and there's a spiritual war going on. But this has been Revelation chapter 18.